I thought after the holidays that I was going to get a little break, but after my laptop broke twice, both my fault, and so did my kiln, not my fault, I've got some bills to pay. I didn't want to just start the next kiln load without doing a refresher on the studio because it needed a change and it definitely needed a deep cleaning as well. I like to try out smaller batches of glaze before graduating them to larger buckets, which reduce waste. But lately I've had so many issues with glaze that it feels daunting to spend over $100 on a glaze that may not work out. It sucks constantly thinking about my finances when I'm trying to make art, but when you start running a business, you unfortunately need to put that as a priority. I know a lot of people enjoy the orange of this wall, but it's getting a little old for me.
I feel a little embarrassed to admit this, but I'm currently making holiday gifts. Yes, as in December 25th themed gifts. I'm currently still making in the middle of January. Making handles might be one of the most suggestive looking parts of pottery. I don't think I've ever taken a lesson where the uh, person doing the demonstration didn't giggle while doing handles. So here I am doing it for the internet for everyone to see. I'm trying to really fall in love with making mugs because I think that it's important that there's a little bit of love and care put into everything that I make. So if I'm making handles and feeling um, upset is the word I can think of, it, I think it can show in the piece. I think that's why I've only made a few mugs each batch and if, I'll tell you something, if it comes out of the kiln and it didn't work out, ooh, I'm just 10 times more upset than usual. It, it just hurts me. This probably also contributes to the fact that I'm using all of my mum's mugs instead of my own because I would have to make mugs for myself. Do you know how long that would take? I don't think so. This is a young lover's mug, so I'm just gonna cut out the J Heart A to put onto it. Just wait and see. You'll see what I'm talking about. One of the mugs I'm making is going to be a kayak mug for my dad. And so I printed out the model online. I've cut out two pieces. This will be the kayak and this is going to be the uh, seat. So I'll be able to use this in order to glaze it black, whereas the rest will be red. I really like hand building, so it's nice to have a bit of time off of the wheel and making these little mushrooms for the mush mugs. Yeah, it's just making my making my week. I love them. They're adorable. I was thinking I might make some mush magnets. Hmm. I'm just gonna cut them in half and attach them to the mugs. I feel like they're kind of adorable. I'm making a mug that says J Heart A and then one says A Heart J and they're called Young Lovers Mugs because they remind me of when you would see a tree with a carving and a heart and two people's names in it. Uh, this is less damage on the tree, I guess. One down, one to go. And I'm just gonna put this inside of a container and spray it down so that everything will sort of become the same moisture level and then we won't have cracks. Hopefully. I thought this winter that I was going to avoid the old seasonal affective disorder, but uh, nope, here we are again, round, I don't know, but I think it's important I get outside every single solitary day and go for a walk. There's a couple of days this week that I got so into trying to get this kiln loaded that I didn't get outside very much. And I will say, I think it's the number one thing that impacts me the most. Sleep does as well, and eating healthy. The wild Karen taps on the ceramic piece to see how thick it is. Oh, see how set she is? She had to take it off. She wasn't fully sure, and she puts it back on. <gasps> she nails it. <laughs> Look at that happy ceramicist. I've realized so many strange things that I do just by all of these video recordings lately. I'm like, you're a weird person, Karen. You're a really strange person. This is why you're single. And this is why you sit at home doing pottery with your plants and your little rabbit. Because you're very strange. <laughs> no, but I'm having a lot of fun. So let me have my fun. 
I realize now that this video makes it look like the only thing I do is trimming, when in actuality, it's really only 5% or less of my time, and I did something really nerdy and I kept track of my time for the last month and a half or so, and I'm going to make a little video on how I actually spend my time as a ceramicist. Now that I've trimmed this tumbler, I'm just adding in the little pinched sides. I've definitely put a couple of holes through tumblers doing this. Weenie, that's a pretty lazy way to eat hay, but I'm here for it. Ever since I got the new setup for the kiln, I've had to change my process for firing. I used to do it uh, using the low, medium, and high element uh, dials, but now I have to use the digital input and I have to use Celsius. So I'm creating now, I'll show you. Right now I'm just putting together the new firing schedule. I've done it only one time before and I think there's some improvements to make, but I'll just keep trying and I'll just keep fiddling with it. This is how many notes I have on all my firing so far. I think there's only like, we're on number 39. That feels low and high at the same time. Feels like I've been doing it a lot longer like a lot longer, but it also feels like, like it's, in my eyes it should be hundreds, but it also feels like 39 is a lot to have done in such a short period of time. And I'm learning so much. My first notes are hilarious compared to my, uh, my newer ones. So hopefully the bisque firing goes well. I've already done this for the glaze firing, so not too much left to do. Also, I can't tell where to look on the screen. That's why I'm looking this way instead of, I forget that this is where <laughs> you're supposed to look. I, in my older videos, I'm looking at the whole, like the home button and I feel like such a loser. I think maybe I should put a smiley face here so that I know where to look and I'm like smiling back at it. <laughs> Okay, it's freezing. It's so cold in here, but we're firing. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Got the neighbors staring. I don't know. Burn, baby, burn, burn, baby, burn. Look at the difference in temperature. And this is Celsius, by the way.
After hours of bisque firing, I let the kiln cool overnight and the next morning I got to crack the lid and ensure everything was safe. Usually nothing goes too wrong during a bisque firing and it's a lot less stressful for me than a glaze firing. The pieces now need to be cleaned of any dust or dirt before I cover them in liquid glaze. Glaze won't stick to any clay that has oil or any sort of dust hindering its ability to do so. These bisque fired pieces are at the perfect stage to have both glaze applied to it and this is when I start to apply wax resist. The wax resist you see here prevents any glaze from attaching itself to the pieces it's been applied to. Sometimes I'll mess up and send wax all over the place. Last time I dropped the bottle and had to re-bisque fire so many pieces in order to get the wax off and try again. Everything's out of the kiln now, and I can't wait to show you next week's video, which will be the kiln unloading. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching.